This is Faith and Coffee. I'm wearing one of my favorite t-shirts given to me. Thank you, Tim. It says, Heretic in Good Company. Uh, Martin Luther and Joan of Arc and Martin Luther King Jr. The Franciscans, those rabble-rousing Franciscans. Down in this section, it says, Jesus of Nazareth. All these people, in their own way, tried to help keep the religious powers of their time honest. And sadly, most of them paid a heavy price for their work. This month is the 500th anniversary of the Protestant Reformation, when a whole bunch of heretics looked at the church and saw that it had become terribly broken. So they went to work trying to fix it, or, well, reform it. Hey everybody, I'm Eric Letterman. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. This is Faith and Coffee. At the heart of Presbyterianism is the Reformation mantra, Ecclesia Reformata, Semper Reformanda, which is Latin for the church reformed and always being reformed. It's likely that phrase actually never existed during the Reformation. Some have suggested it was actually coined by the 20th century theologian Karl Barth, but it still captures the essence of Luther and Calvin and Knox and all the other reformers. We are on a journey of discovery and constant reformation by the power of God's transformative love and grace revealed in and through this, this Jesus of Nazareth, the one that we call our Christ, our Messiah, or the Anointed One, ultimately our teacher. Reformed and always being reformed does not mean we should jump on the latest technological or even theological innovation that hits the webosphere. Newer is not always better. We're still called to test innovations against uh, the spirit of scripture, the spirit of our tradition, as well as the spirit of our own experience of the divine. We're still called, in other words, to discern. Cars were once considered by some to be the devil's contraptions. Now they're the standard for transportation and our economy absolutely depends on them. Computers are another example. Wonderful gifts. I wouldn't be able to make this vlog without them. But they can also be incredibly destructive. We've seen with social media the good and the bad. So what does that all have to do with the Reformation? We need to think critically, pray constantly, wrestle with what it means to be a follower in the way of Jesus today. It's through taking the time to do the hard work of discernment that our communal faith is strengthened, our, our collective wisdom is, is focused, and our shared understanding of God's call on our lives together grows deeper. And that's why I, I love actually being Presbyterian. We hold on to a progressive faith that keeps us moving forward and striving for deeper understandings and ever more faithful responses to the world's issues in each and every age. And we do it together. I believe because of this Protestant tradition, I am a better and more faithful Christian because it draws my attention to places and people I might not otherwise notice. In my second episode this season, I touched a little bit on the Protestant Reformation of the 16th century. So this month, in fact, in seven days, is the 500th anniversary of the Reformation. 500 years ago, on October 31st, 1517, a young priest by the name of Martin Luther posted an academic paper on the door of the castle church in Wittenberg, Germany. This is the castle church, but that's actually not the door that he posted his theses on. That door was actually burned in the 18th century. They have this bronze door that actually contains the words of Martin Luther's 95 grievances. He had a list of 95 things questioning the church's grandiose fundraising scheme by selling forgiveness through what they called indulgences. I think we've done something like that to raise money for our youth mission trips. Luther had come to understand grace was God's free gift, not something that could be bought or sold or even given by a pope, by a church, by a priest, by anyone but God. In some ways, I don't think the church in the West ever really left 
the Reformation. After the 16th century Protestant Reformation, the Roman Catholic Church had a counter-reformation. The leadership rethought and kind of revamped much of what the reformers were actually protesting. In my denomination, the Presbyterian Church USA, we've had so many splits and reunions. Our church family looks more like a, a roller coaster ride than a timeline. Now, don't get me wrong here. I, I'm not bashing reformation movements. In fact, sometimes I think we need to splinter off in order to, to get back to the heart of our core purpose and values as Christians. At the core of the reformation was Luther's original discovery or rediscovery, God's grace. Even John Calvin, who is sadly more known for things like predestination, wrote more about God's grace than anything else. Even while he fought the Geneva City Council for the right to excommunicate people, yeah, excommunication from the church in the Protestant world used to be up to the city leaders, not the religious leaders. <laughs> Phyllis Tickle and others have suggested that we're actually in the middle of another reformation of sorts. About every 500 years or so, the church grows a little too big for its britches. Phyllis Tickle actually called it a, a 500 year rummage sale. Everything is to be reconsidered. The result is often actually two entities, some semblance of the original institution and a newer, leaner, more forward-looking institution. Like the 16th century Reformation and the Roman Catholic Church, the original institution often can't help but go through its own reforming and reformation. What will the church of the postmodern era look like? I have no idea, but probably nothing like we see today. And may God continue to do the work of reconciliation through whatever might emerge. <laughs>don't stop searching, growing, progressing, reforming. Don't stop struggling to be the people God is calling each and every one of us to be. People of compassion, people of justice, people of intellectual, emotional, and spiritual growth. People who are seeking peace in this world by following in the way of Jesus. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to I'm Eric Letterman. This is Half Pint. We'll see you next time. Blessings.